Hi there, this is Carrie Mullins of Carrie Beth Photography. I am doing an edit for Cat Squib of Cat Squib Photography just to show her what I would do to enhance an image. Um, we're going to start out with the raw here that she sent me. And all in all, it's exposed properly. Um, I'm going to, the first thing I always do because I like color, is I usually enhance the saturation a bit and also enhance the blacks just because it makes it a little deeper I can show you on and off it just makes the image a little deeper also because it is this uh, golden hour time of day I am going to warm it up it's already warm but I'm gonna want it a little bit warmer just to show that extra warmth of the low light and I just kind of creep it up little by little. There's no rhyme or reason to how I do it. I just do it until I think it's too much, too little, and then I back it off. And I think I'm good at about 64.50 there. Now, obviously, that's not the same for every image, but um, if you had a good series from this location, you could use those same settings on all of them and just sync them all to this image. Um, I'm processing in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but... It's like Lightroom. It's what I've learned on, and so that's what I use. I'm going to turn it on and off one more time so that you can see. There's the original, and there's the difference with just the small enhancements we made here in RAW, which really just made it a deeper, more substantial image in itself. Now I'm going to open it into Photoshop. Okay, the first thing I really notice um, when looking at this image is... I am going to zoom in and show you. Uh, it's not exactly sharp on the little girls. Uh, if you look at the full image, it really seems as though the focus landed back here in the trees. And um, so if you want to make this a usable image, obviously the first thing you want to do is make sure you shoot so that it's focused properly. But obviously, you can't do anything about that now. So... I'm going to help to show you how to make it look a little sharper. Um, so the first thing we're going to have to do is duplicate the background layer, which I'm going to do with Command-J on my Mac. And then I am going to zoom in, and I am going to use my Quick Mask tool here and quickly mask or select around the girls and the flowers here because what we're going to do is blur the background a little bit just to make them seem a bit sharper. When the background's sharper than the girls, um, it's hard to make it look as though they are the focus of the image. So we're going to fake it. So I'm just slowly going around making sure we have the important parts in there. There are some extra parts being selected here and we'll refine that in a second. The smaller your selection brush is, the better you can get in on all these little details like her fingers without going over into the grass. A little chicken butt there. Selected too much so I'm going to zoom in, make it a little smaller and get just that. It just keeps getting extra. I don't think it's really going to matter because we're going to have this in focus anyways. Uh, I'm going to hold Alt to bring this selection down off of the grass. And it's just, you know, a little bit of click and drag until you have the selection the way you want it. Uh, it's not going to have to be really perfect around here because I will keep a little bit of this plane um, in focus but further up obviously this area here is further back than this area so the further up in the image we go the more refined we have to be with our selections because it's going to get more blurred back there and I'll show you how to do that in a minute we're almost there I'm very um, <laughs> meticulous with my selecting uh, I don't know if everybody is, but I just like to make sure that everything's done right, so it just takes a minute. 
click and drag, click and drag, alt and drag. <laughs> I mean, it's just, um, whatever. We got one more pedal down here, and we'll go through, keep it zoomed in and go through and make sure I'm going to alt and drag in here and try and deselect some of that grass. Make it nice and small, hopefully. With just little clicks, we can get this handle selected without getting the grass selected. Honestly, there are a million ways to select this. I like the quick selection tool. Um, it, it does a decent job, and it is relatively quick. So I don't mind having to undo a few things as we go alt and drag, you know, to unselect things that it had automatically grabbed just because the rest of it is working so well. I'm just going to clean up her arm right there. That's pretty close. And get that little knob off of there. All right, we're pretty close. So I'm going to drag this in just a little bit. I hope this isn't too boring for you, but this meticulousness will pay off in the end. All right, you see I've left the little wispy hairs and I'm gonna show you how to fix those in a minute. So I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm actually going to invert it. So Command I and that's made it, I'll back it up so you can see, it was uh, white on the girls which means that the girls are the only thing showing on this layer. And I want really the only thing that's showing on this layer to be the background. So I'm going to Command I, that inverts it from uh, black background to white background. And the girls are blacked out now, so you won't be able to see them. Now I'm also going to Command and click on that mask, and that reselects that selection. And I want to do that before I go in and add the blur, just because um, I want to make sure that I'm only selecting. Um, or only blurring the background. I don't want it to blur any of the girls. But before we do that, actually, I should not have added this yet. I'm sorry. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to refill that with white because I'm going to refine my selection before. Come on. Refine color. Oh, ah, that's why I've got my selection. There we go. All right. I got a step ahead of myself. So let's go back up. Our last quick selection here. We're going to refine that. We want to refine that before we add the mask, just so that everything is proper. So I'm going to go in. You can click right here or go into Select and Refine Edge whatever you want. And go to reveal layer. And I'm going to paint all those little stray hairs. I'll go all the way around her head. And this is a great way to get those fixed so that they show up. It just takes a minute. And we'll get hers. All right, this should be pretty good. I'm going to look at the mask and see if I need to. Honestly, I don't think I need to refine much. I think that that's pretty good. You can see exactly what's going to be masked off. And um, I don't know what that is, but we'll make sure that that's not an issue. That's kind of funny. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. Oh, ha! Huh. It's this little beam of light. That's what that was. We can deselect that little bit there. All right, now I'm going to add my mask. Invert. Command I to invert. OK. So we have, we're going to hold Command click on that mask. We've got our selection again and then 
the next step is to go into filter and oh let's go we gotta click on the background layer filter blur gallery tilt shift is my favorite way to do this i know that this is not the way that most people do it but it really allows me to play with that field the depth of field so I'm going to drag this down because we we're going to want just this plane that they're sitting on to really be the focus of the image. So we have these lines here. This is the solid lines are where the focus lands. And then these dotted lines are how far out you want that to uh, fade. It's like a gradient fade up to that line and beyond. So um, the closer to this line it is, the more sharp it is. And then it fades out to blur, 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 more blur, more blur, more blur, all the way up. So you just play around with it until you like it. Um, I really want, like I said, just this line here to really be in focus. So I'm gonna close it down quite a bit. And it takes a minute for it to catch up and show you um, what it's going to look like and I can bring this up a little bit I think. I don't want to bring it up too much because I do not want to introduce blur into their legs or their feet but um, I'm just play around with it. Honestly there's no real right or wrong as long as you leave the plane that they're sitting on in focus you're good. So let's see where we are. It looks pretty good there. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can see. We've got a good fade out into blur here. It's not too close to the girls. It looks realistic. Down here as well it's fading out nice and gradually so that it's not a distinct line. You don't want to see a very sharp line of blur there because um, it just looks fake. And um, as far as the blur of the background goes, the power is okay. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and see what it looks like. So I just brought it from 15 to 21. Um, we want to make sure that her hair looks good. So let's let it blur again. I think 21 is probably just a little bit much for the focal length that this was shot at. It's not going to look incredibly realistic. So I'll probably bring it down just a tiny bit, maybe to like 18. I'll zoom out so that it can catch up here and look. And I think that that's good. It creates some separation between them, but it doesn't look like we faked the blur, which is really what we want to avoid. We don't want people thinking that we faked it. Um, it's always better if they don't know. <laughs> Um, anyway, sorry. That's a little bit of my husband's humor coming out. I blame him, and I apologize. Ah, uh, no, I don't. I think it's funny. Whatever. We'll let this catch up here. And, um, and then we'll get to work on enhancing the image in other ways. While we're still in here with this selection made. Um, and we want to, if I zoom in on this, I'm gonna show you this blur that we just made has zero noise to it. Whereas the girls have quite a bit of noise to them and we don't want that. So we're going to again, Command J to get that selection. Um, and then we're going to go into filter, noise, add noise, and if you look, I've got about 1.97%, <clears throat> excuse me, and that has added a good amount of noise to the background to match what the girls have there. Um, I didn't pre-adjust that, that's just a setting that I had on my the last thing that I added noise to, and it just happens to work on this image, but you can play around with it. So there it is, preview off, so you can see how creamy and smooth it is, which isn't natural to the image, so we turn it on, 
and you can see that noise, which makes it look more, um, more real. So we'll hit OK and leave that there. And then we are going to uh, deselect by hitting Command D. I'm going to flatten my image because our, I really don't need to keep this layer separate anymore. I'm happy with it. I don't need to change it. Um, if you don't want to flatten it, you can always Command J to duplicate the background and then Command E from the top layer down and that just gets rid of that mask because the mask can um, cause some issues with duplicating and making things work the way you want them to work. Getting that mask out of there if you don't need it anymore is good. Um, so the only thing I need to manipulate on the actual image pixels now is just this little sun flare on her cheek. So if I didn't want to do it on the blur layer and risk messing up that layer and having to redo everything, I would command J to duplicate that so that the new changes that I make are on a new layer. And if I mess anything up, I can delete that layer, go back to the blur layer and start from there instead of having to start completely over because I can't back up enough. So that's always a good thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to use my spot healing tool. You can use J on your keyboard to get to that. And I have it sized. You don't want it too small like that. I'm going to size it just a little bit bigger than that circle on her cheek. One click and it's gone. And um, I think that's really the only thing that we have to fix. Oh, you know what? No, we'll go over here. You use a stamp tool, so that's uh, shortcut S on your keyboard. And we're going to get rid of this sign. We don't want that there. So I'm just going to grab over here on this line here and bring it over. We don't want to grab from too close and create a repeating pattern that's going to be really noticeable. So I'm just going to use a soft brush, lightly paint it in. And there you go, so that's gone. And then I think there was another, yep, just a tiny little thing there. So we're gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna grab from over here. And I'm just lightly paint it in. There we go. See, so now those little signs are gone. No distractions for the eye. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is fix her dress here. Um, obviously it doesn't look like it needs fixed, but this is something that I like to do a lot of. Uh, whenever anybody's wearing white outdoors, it seems to pick up um, the colors of the atmosphere, really. The colors reflecting off the sky is blue. Um, you can get like a blue magenta tinge to whites, and I just think it looks cleaner if it's nice and white. So I, um, I made an action a long time ago that does that for me. It's just a hue adjustment layer um, with adjustments made to get rid of that pink and that blue. Oops, I need my brush. So I hit B for my brush um, to grab my brush tool. And then X will flip you back and forth between black and white. When you're painting on a mask, I've got a black mask. I'm going to need a white brush to show what is under that mask, the adjustment that I've made. So I'm just painting it on. I don't have to be too careful. Um, it's not going to really affect any yellows or anything, but if there is any uh, magenta in her skin tone, like right here on her arm, you'll see if I paint on it, it turns gray. So I will paint that off because we want to keep that pinky tone there. It's just it's more natural than her having a gray arm. Also, we want to make sure that this flower stays pink. And so I paint that back. And um, I think we're good. We're not going to paint hers with the white adjust or the hue adjustment that makes it white because she has the blue flowers on her dress or her jumper. And we'll lose those and have to paint them in one by one. It's really pick your battles. Do you want white whites 
or do you want to see the blue flowers? You don't want to put that much time into singling out all of this unless the blue tinge to her whites is really terrible, which it isn't. So I'm just going to leave it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is, let me think, I'm going to flatten it down because I'm going to run an action that I have, um, I made this action to, uh, where is it? <laughs> there it is. This is to kind of mimic sharpness. Uh, if I play that and zoom in, you're going to see it makes it really super duper sharp, which you don't want it to be extra sharp. But it is, I've just used an unsharp mask uh, and played around with settings until I found something that worked well on many images. Honestly, I can't remember the settings, but I have it saved as an action so that I don't have to remember. So I'm going to invert that mask to black, and you can already see, I'll back it up. You can see how sharp it has made it. I'm going to back it up because I don't want the whole image to be extra sharp. I just want the girls to be sharper. So I'm going to make my brush bigger. And um, I'm going to paint it on at 100% and then we'll bring, oops, I need a white brush. Then we'll bring the opacity of that layer down because obviously we don't, we don't need it to be at 100%. That's pretty noisy and uh, not really the way you want your final image to look so so that's at a hundred percent it does make it sharper which is nice but we don't want to overdo it so we're just going to drag down the opacity probably to 50 let's see yeah see that does the job they're sharper as you can see as I click on and off they're sharper but it's not so incredibly sharp and that it looks disgusting. I'm going to paint it off of her arm right here because that's extra noisy and honestly we don't really need the sharpness on her arm so I'm going to paint a little bit off of her neck we don't need it there either but aside from that maybe a little bit over here on her and we're good let me get that all right flatten that because I don't need that layer anymore and now I am going to use another um, action that I made, which uh, it, it's just, um, there's a sharpen layer, there's a skin smoothing layer, and then an eye brightening layer. Uh, again, I don't really remember the settings that I used for these, but these are actions that you can find in other places too. Um, it's similar to other actions that do the same thing so uh, MCP actions has great actions uh, I don't ever buy actions I just prefer to learn how to do it myself and then make my own so I don't know who to refer you to uh, I just know I use MCP for my all-over sharpening at the end because that's what I've used for years and they've never failed me so that's what I, I stick with so all in the details is just going to uh, sharpen up their eyes, make them stand out a little bit, but I don't want to use 100%. So I'm going to bring my brush down to 35 by clicking uh, 35 on my keyboard. And then white brush, I'm just going to paint it on the eyes, nose, mouth. Same over here, eyes, nose, mouth. And you can see it's just made them a little darker, makes them stand out a little bit more, which is good. Um, only need a tiny bit of softening on their face just because they're so far away. Honestly, I'm just getting rid of a little bit of that noise. It's not actually doing much to soften their skin. And I'm not being very meticulous about it because they are so far away in the image. And because... Um, because of the fact that it is noisy, they aren't incredibly sharp, um, we're not going to crop in very close on these because you don't want that to be the focus. You don't want people to look at the image and say, oh, wow, they're not very sharp. You want them to be able to step back and say, wow, that is an adorable picture. So we'll keep them um, uh, a little bit further out. We'll leave it a little zoomed out when we crop. So I'm just slightly softened 
not much. It's not uh, really a necessity to do a whole lot there. So we're going to flatten now. And then uh, you can see I have I have a whole workflow of actions I've made. And I'm going to try, try to remember to tell you what kind of adjustment each one is. Um, if I don't, just ask in the comments. So the next one um, I'm going to use is my magic depth and then um, my bright bump. So magic depth is a selective color layer that I've made adjustments to to bring in some depth to the image. So you can see as I click it on and off here, it just brings out deeper colors in the image that really make it more vibrant and deeper and more interesting not so washed out. I know a lot of people that have bright airy pictures that this wouldn't work for and I love their their images. This is just my style and I'm not saying it's the only way to do it so you can just do what you like. Um, the bright bump layer obviously just bumps the brightness. Um, that is a levels adjustment layer and it's just tweaked to the point where I think it works on all of my images. Honestly, I, I add both of these layers to pretty much every image. Uh, with the selective color, um, the magic depth layer, I do sometimes like to paint it off of skin. Uh, sometimes it just makes the skin a little bit too contrasty. And here it did make her a little bit darker, so I'm going to go ahead and paint that off with a black brush. Only on the skin. Um, oh, I've only got my opacity at 35, so I'm going to hit 0 to make it 100. Because I just want to get rid of it all the way. We'll do it off of her arms, little sister's legs, arm, and face. We can leave it in the hair, and that's fine because that deepens that up a little bit but now you can see it's not affecting their skin anymore, which is good. So let me turn both of those off and on for you, can, for you so you can see the difference. It just, you know, it's just a little pop to the image. And little pops are what you want. You don't want something that's so over the top that um, it just doesn't look natural. So I'm going to flatten that. And uh, my next step is usually to sharpen. I have uh, the MCP high definition action, um, high definition sharpening action. I've had that for nearly the whole eight years that I've been uh, photographing professionally. And honestly, I use it every time. I won't ever make my own sharpening action as long as this one continues to work as well as it does for me because there's no reason for me to rebuild an action when you have something that's so great. And I think, I know I got it for free, but I think it is still free. So if you want to go to MCP Actions, she's not paying me to say this. It's just something that I have and I like it. And so I'm telling you, MCP Actions, it's a great, um, I think you look in the, the freebies section and you'll find it. High definition sharpening action and it comes with a web resize action too which is good but I usually turn the sharpening off in that one anyway so we have our basic image done so I'm going to play that action real quick you can see it's in the middle of one of my workflow actions um, because I do have a flow to what I do I'm not using it today because I just wanted to show you exactly how I do this step by step. Um, it automatically flattens. So I backed it up because I want to mask some of the sharpening off their face because we did already add extra sharpening. So with a brush at 50% 50 per, 50 opacity, I'm going to brush off some of that sharpening just because We've already added sharpening there. You don't want to overdo it. Get it off of her arms and legs. I think we're good. So now it 
looks sharpened to the point where it matches the rest of the image, but not so overly sharp. I'm going to take a little bit off of her some more. Um, I think Little Sister is okay. Maybe one more click. Okay, it's a very slight change. Again, slight changes are good. I'm going to flatten that. Okay, and then the next thing I have is um, my last step, which is to crop. At this point, I would save. So uh, I always crop my images before I show clients. But obviously, if they are going to want a larger image, I need to have the large, larger image uncropped and ready to show. So I will save it as a final edit. And then I'll go in and do my cropping and then my final little touches that I like to put on after I crop. Uh, so again, like I said earlier, I don't want to crop in too much just because the girls are not incredibly sharp. Even though we made it kind of look like they were the focus, um, even though the focus had fallen back on the trees, we still don't want it to be so obvious that they didn't have um, real focus landing on them. So we're, we're going to keep them pretty well centered in this image. And give them a good border of space around them just so that uh, so that it's it's a little more camouflaged. And I think I want a little bit more of this sky in there. And I just kind of I nudge it around using my arrow keys little by little until I see that it looks centered to my liking. Um, and then I hit enter. All right, so this is this is where I'm happy with it being cropped. So I'm going to do my final step, which is to darken the edges, which really brings the focus into the middle of the image. So I'm going to hit play on my action over here. So this is going to, it copies the background layer two times. And on the top one, it does an effects um, adjustment. So if you double click on any layer, you get the effects palette here and it does an inner shadow and I do double copies so that I can merge that inner shadow layer down onto the one below it because if you try and mask an inner shadow layer um, you'll get shadow around all your masking so then instead of just having the the shadow on the edges you'll have shadows around all your brush strokes which you don't want so on this one I don't really have to uh, mask let me turn these off. I don't really have to mask this much. Uh, you have to watch it around uh, the sky. Anything that's nice and white. So you can see I'll paint it off here. It made it. There's darker, lighter. Um, you don't want it to be too gray in the whites. Uh, it looks unnatural, but you can't really tell in this image, so it's fine. So these are my two... Uh, burn layers that I've created. All I've done is just feathered them in from the sides at different uh, different powers. Like this one's really feathered in and then this one is just more uh, hugging the edges and obviously they're they're pretty strong right now so I'm going to turn them down. And this one I usually stick around about uh, 20, 30, 20 or 30 percent and then it's all just to your liking. This actually looks pretty good, but it is kind of dark. So I'm going to bring this one down to 30 and see what we think. And we'll look at 20. Mm -hmm. And this is what I do. I just go back, <laughs> back and forth. I sit at my computer and go back and forth and try and decide on things. I like it a little stronger. Uh, I don't know if everybody does. But that's where I'm going to leave it. So I've got this one at 30%, and it's just a curves adjustment. So you can see I've just dragged the curves down here. Same here. I just have different, um, different masks on each of them. So uh, I think the only other thing that you can play around with on this that could be fun is maybe adding uh, a, 
a sun flare, which I have a pre-made one that I've made, and we can throw that in there. So I just um, I made a sun flare on a black layer. You put it onto the image, and it screens it. I'm going to readjust the size of it here because we don't want to see these edges. So if you have anything with a black background and you hit screen, um, this this over here, your uh, your layer options, your blending mode, screen will make black disappear, which is nice. It's nice to know, right? There's a lot of things you can do with it if you play around. So we just want to make sure that this edge doesn't show. I, um, I hit Command T to transform it. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what I was doing there. Command T brings up the uh, free transform that you get here from the edit palette. It's just another shortcut. And shortcuts are nice. So here it is on and off. We don't want it on the face of that little girl or either of them. So I'm going to go on the layer mask, black brush, and just quickly paint it off. Um, my brush is only at 30% again, so I'm going to hit 0 to make it 100. And now it's doing the job. There we go. Now we can turn it on and off again, and you can see it's not affecting their face anymore. So honestly, gosh, I like it with, I like it without. I'm going to leave it in. I like the extra little haziness that it adds. And um, normally for me, this would be an end edit for me. I would be done. But that's only because I have a very clean, crisp uh, editing style. But I do have a soft spot in my heart for matte images. So I will add a matte to this just to see how you like it. Uh, this is just another action that I've made. Uh, I played around with an exposure adjustment layer a long time ago to get a mat that I thought worked well on many images and once I had settings I liked I saved them and I made them into an action so that's a great way to uh, speed up your workflow is to sit down one day and experiment with these adjustment layers and do adjustments that you think enhance an image and then pull them onto another image and see how it works and pull them onto a different kind of image and see how it works and if it continuously works to your style and your taste, save those settings and make yourself an action because it's a lifesaver. It speeds things up so much. So anyway, here it is with the matte on it, and I, I do really like it. I so wish that I could edit with matte sometimes, but it just it doesn't mesh with my style, I, and I don't want to put out two different styles of images I really want to be consistent so I don't use it and honestly the few times that I've tried to work them in as an option in client galleries they said no I like the clean and crisp because that's what we hired you for so I just stick with clean and crisp but there is the mat and I like it I don't know you let me know what you think I'll send you the layered file so that you can um play around with it and see if you want to change anything. But as far as that goes, um, this would be a finished image for me. So let's see, we will go to history. I'm going to duplicate that so we can look and see where we started. Here's our girls. Again, not incredibly sharp. The background's sharper than they are. And then here it is fixed, before, after, they're adorable, you did a good job, and hopefully I have helped you to learn how to enhance your image. Thank you.